thing, but but I could tell yeah. that they knew what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. yes. It wasn't just church stuff. Right. They were living that thing. Yes. It, it was yes. coming. It was oozing through the screen. <laughs> I just told them I like to have some of that. Jesus. Just, just send it over this way. Amen. I know this is impartation and put my hands on the screen. Go ahead, for real. <laughs> Amen, yes. sir. Because there's certain things you just don't want to do. Yes. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> oh boy. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's the type of substance I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. That's the substance that God wants to bring into our life. Yes. Amen. Where you do like Second Corinthians four eighteen says. While we look not at the things which are seen, but things, but at things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, mm -hmm. but the things which are not seen are eternal. Yes. I want to cleave to that stuff. Yes. I want to fast and I want my heart to be fixed in that dimension so that I won't be soon shaken. Amen. Amen. That's, that's, what, that's what prophetic vision, that's what revelation yes. comes. That's when that tenacity comes. Where, where we're not wishy-washy, you know, like I put it in the group, you know, I made a statement and I said, please don't put no mushy-mushy, I ain't right. say mushy-mushy, don't put nothing up there. Oh, Pastor, we got it, we going to do this, we moving forward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look, man, I done heard it. I done had quite people pull up, come up to me in the service, I done had them call me up on the phone, ain't nobody got time for that now. Yeah, mm -hmm. We got to be about the Father's business. Mm -hmm. It's about being about our Father's business. I don't need no mushy-mushy stuff. I need you to get your tail off that couch, get your tail off the whatever you in, whatever situation you in, whatever your mind is, and whatever web of deceit you in, just shake yourself off that stupor and understand and especially these teachings I'm giving you on revelation and how to put reposition your spirit, man, so that you can be productive in the kingdom. We ain't got we ain't got time for the excuses. We were not now. We, no no, we 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 fought too close. Yes. And that's what the enemy do. He, he get you distracted right when you're there. Right. And so we can't look at those things. Yeah. Amen. We can't allow our, to be, have broken focus. We can't allow our destiny to be aborted. Yeah. Come on now. We can't prolong this journey. We can't continually live on pause. We can't continually live on regret. Amen. You know, I ain't got time for regret, man. Anybody feel that way? Yeah. I know you should. Because <laughs> if you don't, it's going to sabotage your concentration. Yes. And you're, you're going to have a distorted memory. Amen. And then your expectation of God is going to be perverted. Right. Yes. That's, right. That's why you got to be renewed. Yes. God has given you, he's giving you a ram in the bush. He's mm -hmm. notified your wisdom. Right. The wisdom of this world promises nothing. But God has given us a, a, a channel to be able to perceive the things of God. The wisdom of God. And that comes through the Holy Spirit. Right? So it's imperative. So we got to make sure that we're going to start walking in the direction of what our convictions are. Yeah, yeah, right. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, no, I, I was convicted on some tragedy. I mean, uh, just cat it. What, what, what's the word? Nasty stuff when I, before I met Christ. I would just, I would follow anything. Quick. Anybody else? I know, don't raise your hand. I, I mean, if, if it looked good, I went after it. You know, it smelled good, whatever. So my senses were lower. But now I have to, you know, get to a place where God can circumcise me and wean me and do an internal work on the inside of me. And I have to be willing to yield to it. That's the key. You can keep hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing it, but you got to be able to yield to it. So you must offer yourself to the Lord. This is what I wrote in order to get to the place that I've been speaking about for the last two and a half months. It behooves us to walk by faith. And not by our natural insight. It's all about what God has said about a matter. That's why we don't look at things. This is the reality in the heart of true faith. Without faith, you will always fall short of the grace of God. You won't recognize him or receive from him. Therefore, we must offer ourselves to the Lord in order that we may develop a tenacity and intensity to go after what he has promised. We must break cycles. Too many seek more... Too many seek to move physically first. <laughs> For real, right? We respond. I mean, we react. God don't want us to react. God wants us to respond. Mm -hmm. It's the difference. Stop being a victim to your circumstances. Be able to contemplate. Go within yourself before you say it. Amen? Amen. Too many seek to move physically first and overlook the necessity for preparing themselves mentally first. Amen? This is done by the internal work of the Holy Spirit. 
It is done by receiving God's engrafted word. It is done by the eyes of your understanding being enlightened to a certain level of clarity and purpose. Amen. Now go with me to 1 Timothy 4. I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you a little bit of something. So, uh, I basically said <clears throat> it's very imperative. I like 1 Timothy 4 because it, to me, is a backdrop and a nutshell. Even though it's a so some people, if you go to seminary, they say it's pastoral letters, but if you go to a real good kingdom church, they'll tell you it's, it's actually a sonship. Because Paul was raising up Timothy to be a son. <laughs> and um, the church in Ephesus, uh, that was uh, Timothy's ministry. He was, he was the apostle over Ephesus. Amen? I know uh, you get to do a little searching for that one, but trust me, I gave it to you for free. Uh, go down. Uh, so we, we need to know that there's some encouragement. And God wants us to be encouraged and be encouraged. Be encouraged. <clears throat> I'm trying to talk fast when my voice go. It ain't long. It ain't too far off. Uh, go to First Timothy four. No, no, I'm not gonna lose my voice. Go Amen. ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. First Timothy. Did I say four? Yes. Yeah, four eleven. Amen. Y'all got it. Yes, said these things command and teach next let no man despise thy youth but be thou an example of the believers in the word mm -hmm. conversation charity spirit faith and purity those are characteristics yes. temperaments that needs to be in a person who desire to be in ministry you ain't got nothing else stop trying to do ministry 13 <laughs> till I come give attendance to reading exhortation and doctrine so a minister can't be lazy amen mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know why I'm probably reading. Well, you probably ain't a minister. Uh, uh, 14. Yeah, for real. Neglect not the gift that's in thee, which was given thee by prophecy. Not what? Neglect not the gift that's in you, which was given thee by who? Prophecy. With the laying on the hands of the presbytery. So I gave you the components on how to communicate with God. Now I'm going to encourage you how to stay on this journey so that you can come into full fulfillment. Right? These things here will help you come into fulfillment. I always revisit it. I know he's talking about prophecy. But to me, prophecy is an unction message. So it's, it's comprised of not just a personal word. It's a corporate word. But we know that the gears that make a prophecy work is revelation. So I always read it in that aspect. So I even could tag, neglect not to give this in you, which was given to you by revelation. Yeah. <laughs> With the land on the hands of the presbytery. So which, which lets you know, <clears throat> if you're going to be able to function on, a, on the level that God has called you to, that it won't just be your unique, tailor-made experience. Amen. I know. Because most of us just want to, I mean, we're a self-made man. I never met one, but we say we self-made. We don't need nobody. You know, I'm opening myself up on so many levels. I mean, you need tutelage. You need yes. tutors. You need governors. Yes. yes. Amen? Yes. Even if you become a pastor, you still need tutelage. Mm -hmm. You still need governors. You still need somebody that's in your corner. So he yes. said, yes. that was given to you by the presbytery. Yes. Mature, aged people around you. They have an understanding of scriptures. We live on islands, but God never called us to be on the island. You know that. He wanted us to be in community because that's Amen. that's how you grow. You grow in community. They grew in community in the first century church. They were strong because they had community. We don't have community in our churches, even at this church, because we just, for whatever reason. Yeah, with the laying on the hands of the presbytery. Next verse. Meditate upon these things. You hear me say this all the time. It comes up quite a bit. Got to meditate on it. Got to meditate on it. 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 Because that's a process. That's a principle that you apply to yourself. And which, when you meditate, you're reminding yourself of God's expectation and your potential. Every time you meditate, you say, this is God's expectation. This is my potential. I'm going to take my potential and go reach God's expectation. And the more and more I recycle it and play it over in my mind, I'm going to prophesy. I'm going to prophesy. I'm going to prophesy. I'm going to preach. I'm going to hear. I'm going to cast out. 
I'm going to lay hands. More and more I tell myself. That that's what it means to meditate. To rehearse. To remind yourself. One rabbinical writer said it means to paint a picture. Remember I told you guys some time ago. You got to paint a picture. What picture do you want? What image do you want? Every time you meditate, you're, you're adding an image. You're add adding some type of angle in the spirit. Amen. I mean, no, everything outside of us is putting images on Amen. We sit in front of TV, they put the images on you. They try to tell you a man and a man is good, a woman and a woman is good now. Those are images. So you have to create a safe zone. See, most of us think a secret, a secret place is finding a location in the house. <laughs> And it's, yeah, 20 years ago. <laughs> no, no, the secret place is not a location. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Now, now I'm not trying to say, you, I mean, if you got shrines in your house, I mean, if you got a, if you got a place in your house where you meet with God, please meet with him. Amen. I want, I want to see what he does after that. I want to see the fruit of that encounter. And we need to be blessed by that transformation. So please, meet as much as possible. I'm not knocking it. I'm just telling you, when you get tired, because you will, uh, you got to know that there's a secret place on the inside of you. Yes. Amen. Amen. And as you meditate upon those things that's being taught in the house, then not just meditate, but give yourself a little bit to it. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. When I feel like it, when, I, when he say something, I like <laughs> Oh, yeah, right, right. When you got the right suit on, you know. Yeah, all that petty stuff. That's their petty warfare the enemy created on us. We start sizing up stuff and try to figure out why we're not measuring up. Okay. Yeah, but uh, give thyself wholly to what? Yeah. Remember a long time ago I told you, you said, a message has no form until you give your life to it. Trust me, the reason why you are the way you are right now, ain't no devil. Ain't no devil. It's a lack of incentives. There's no zeal. There's no initiative. There's no follow through. Ain't no devil. He gonna make you think that ain't no devil in hell can make you not get to where God wants you to get. Amen. Ain't no way. And when God showed me when I was going through some things, and God showed me the man man from Gadara, this dude had six thousand or ten thousand demons. None of y'all in here got that many. Maybe half. You ain't got 